I always wanted to write a book. That's basically what it was. I was going to write a book. In fact, on the first date with my wife, I was still in college. I hadn't done anything with my life. And I told her, I'm going to go into special forces. I'm going to write a book. And that's what I was going to do. And I uh, went to the military and I served, you know, 22 years. And my last assignment, as you said, was teaching to Citadel. And I had a lot of time on my hands from where I'd come from to the nine to five routine of being an instructor was wildly different. Uh, and I had so much time on my hands. I told my wife, I'm going to write a book. And I thought it would sit on the bedside table. I, I never thought it would sell. I was just, my mom would say, that's a really good book, Brad. Way to go. And I wanted to write a story of redemption. That's the whole theme of One Rough Man. It's a story of redemption. But people said, you know, write what you know. And, you know, so if I'd have been a police officer, Pike would have been a cop. If I'd have been a priest, Jennifer would have been a nun. I happened to be a counterterrorist commando. And so that's what Pike became. But the story was about a redemption. What I set out to do uh, was basically write what I would like to read. I, like I said, I'm a voracious reader. So I'm going to write what I want to read. Uh, I didn't look at the marketplace. I didn't look at anything like that. I'm just going to write a book that I would like to read. And sometimes you, I have to go over dialogue. Um, you know, it'll take me two days to get one paragraph out going over and over and over the dialogue because I want the, the actual impact that I'm trying to achieve is there. And sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. And I rewrite and rewrite and rewrite. Um, but I know I, I've been asked that before. Does, you know, Pike speak to me in the dead of night? No, he doesn't. <laughs> I just... You know, when I have something, I have gotten up in the dead of night and saying, I have a journal that I uh, take everywhere with me that uh, something hits me in the middle of the night, I'll turn the light on and start scribbling right then. Don't forget this, because there's been several times when I've uh, had a great idea in the middle of the night and didn't write it down. The next morning, I can't remember what it was. Uh, but you were talking about One Rough Man. I mean, you get your entire life to write your first book. I mean, <laughs> you could write forever. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it's a second book where it gets tough when you're on deadline, and now you really got to buckle down. People ask me all the time if that thing's real and it's absolutely not real. We have nothing like that. Uh, I wrote, I created the task force and I've, I've worked at the CIA. I've worked all the intelligence community. I've worked in obviously classified organizations. Um, and I didn't want anybody to say I was writing about real units and just changing the names um, because I, you know, it was non-disclosure statements and things like that. And I was, so I created the task force out of whole cloth. And then people say, oh, get the task force. Like, no, we don't. So I knew anybody who read the book who'd ever served anything like that would go, we got nothing like that. We all would have liked to have it. We all thought it was great, but we don't have anything like it. But since I knew how it'd be created, I couldn't make it, um, you know, completely crazy cowboy action movie. There would be an oversight to the thing. They would have a charter of what they could do. And I had to create all that. Well, the problem with that is when you're writing a series, uh, your first book, you've got the entire universe. The minute you say somebody has blue eyes, they've got blue eyes forever. Well, the minute I created the charter for the task force, I boxed them in. Here's what they're going to do. I had no idea I was going to write this many books. I didn't think I'd have one book published, much less 15 now. Uh, and so I said, here's what they're going to do. They've got to be on the foreign terrorist designation list from the State Department. They've got all these parameters they've got to do. Here's how they're going to do things. They're not allowed to listen to Americans. They can't do anything on, you know, uh, continental United States soil, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then as you're going forward in the, in the series, you're like, why did I ever do that? Now I got I to gotta figure out a way for these guys to do this now, even though I said they couldn't do it. So you, every time you write something, you neck down the universe a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Uh, this is a, one of the more topical books I've ever written. I usually don't like writing about current events. Uh, this is about the war between Russia and Ukraine. Uh, I don't like sticking into current events because they're current. and Anything goes sideways and cause the book to fail. But that's, that's the genesis of the book. I still do security consulting, so I was keeping abreast of Ukrainian, the war in Ukraine just because of that. I had no intention about writing a book about it. And as I was doing the research for it, I ran across uh, a system called a perimeter system in Russia. We're always talking about red lines for going to, you know, when's it going to be nuclear war? And they have a thing called a perimeter system, which was created back in the USSR days, in the old Soviet Union days. Uh, and it was a counteraction against our um, strategic defense initiative, the Star Wars, Reagan Star Wars thing, which theoretically could knock out every missile that Russia launched at us, which it never came to fruition, but it scared the heck out of the Russians. And so they created what at the time was the very first artificial intelligence. So they had this computer system that had all these feeds that would feed into it from seismic sensors to ground activity to communications nodes between the Kremlin and military commands and all these systems fed into this computer. And if all the conditions were met, the computer said we had a first strike and then the computer would launch the missiles. It was called the dead hand in the West. It's, uh, it was called a perimeter system in Russia and it still exists. And I read that and said, man, that is something else. There's a story there. And so what I did was fictionally change it from a first strike, which is what the real world thing does to cause a perimeter system to initiate 
Putin changes it to the dead man's hand, saying that if I leave, if there's a coup, if I fall out a window, whatever, something happens to me, I'm launching all these missiles. So there's no reason to try to get rid of me, because if you do, you're getting rid of yourself. And that was the genesis of the book. The main group is a group of uh, um, partisans from Ukraine who are, they decide this is just a stalemate. It's just continually back and forth with Russia. The only way we're going to get Russia out of, out of Ukraine is to get rid of Putin. So their whole thing is they're going to try eliminate Putin, get him out of power. Um, my hero, Pike Logan, the guy that's, he's now got a moral dilemma. Do I actually protect Putin from these guys? Because he's, the, the partisans don't know about the dead man's hand, but Pike Logan finds out about it. Now he's got like, you know, I want to help the, the partisans of Ukraine, but in so doing, I'm going to engender my own demise. And it's kind of a moral dilemma for him.